Hello all and welcome back. I hope everyone is doing really well. Update video again today covering what's been happening across the crypto markets, what to expect if you're a newcomer to the cryptocurrency markets, and of course a whirlwind recap as well of everything we've seen so far on Hedera over the last week or so. One of the first things I wanted to touch on, as I've not done so for probably quite a few months at this point, is how we are looking on the fear and greed index because previously we'd seen as high as greed and now we are starting to see us top into extreme greed. So you can see majority of the metrics here for the last month being in extreme greed from 79 all the way up to 88. In fact, if I flip back to the max chart, we can see we are actually approaching previous all-time high greed levels of when we saw last all-time high price spikes hit. Of course, we have seen Bitcoin move towards new higher highs and at the moment, we are seeing some sideways action across Bitcoin, a bit of a pullback across the markets. A lot of this is being driven via things like release of the ETF, so additional volume in the markets from ETF ex instrument exposure to new retail and institutional investors alike. We've got some very good macroeconomic positive sentiment and things like risk on environments are returning. This could get even better from a macroeconomic standpoint as well. Potentially, we will see some Fed rate cuts take place moving forward very, very shortly. One thing I wanted to note, though, is typically the rule of thumb with fear and greed indexes in the past, because, of course, it is a sentiment indicator. Um, we see here zero means extreme fear, while a uh, value of 100 means extreme uh, greed. Extreme fear can obviously be a sign investors are very worried, and this could sometimes or typically be seen as a good buying opportunity and when investors are getting too greedy over exuberance in the markets it's due for a correction and potentially that's the opportunity to where you'd like to take profits as always ensure you know what you're holding and what your effective strategy is but never shy away from taking profits in markets like this when we are seeing large swings of volatility and i must admit this will continue um, we've not seen anything yet in terms of how previous market cycles have worked, where we see enormous price movements in the likes of Bitcoin and other altcoins. Wanted to touch on this, something called the path to alt season. It's been shared many, many years ago and probably by many people. Those of you who aren't new to the crypto space have probably seen the likes of this before, but I thought I'd touch on it anyway, because I've seen across various Twitter circles, Discord, comment sections, etc. You know, when is HTS token X going to pump or when is this altcoin HBAR, whatever it may be, going to pump? Because they're seeing Bitcoin rate rise in price effectively, yet they aren't seeing any of their other investments move. Typically, we see four phases take place before an alt season goes live or three other phases. Phase one is obviously Bitcoin, so money flows into the largest cryptocurrency um, by market capitalization, and that is, of course, Bitcoin, which causes price surges. We then see a phase overlap of where we start seeing money flow into Ethereum, but it struggles to keep up with Bitcoin, and therefore we see high levels of Bitcoin dominance still. Ethereum will go back and forth with Bitcoin, um, and eventually Ethereum would start to outperform. This is typically what we've seen. Again, then we start seeing more of that capital flow down from Ethereum into large caps. So that's phase three. Ethereum has probably been outperforming Bitcoin for a while at that point, and large caps then begin to go parabolic. That is the stage at which we'd start seeing probably the likes of Hedera or HBAR really pick up some momentum and move back towards, hopefully, its previous all-time highs. So phase four of the alt season then is large caps have probably gone full vertical when we're seeing blow off tops for the majority of them. Mid caps, low caps and micro caps will then all tend to pump around the same sort of time. And therefore that would begin to signal that we're in an alt season and potentially that bull market is beginning to sort of fade out or, or return to some sort of normality in terms of volatility. So of course, there's no hard and fast rules when it comes to markets, because of course they are free and open markets, particularly with something like crypto that trades 24 seven, 365. But at the moment we are firmly probably in phase one, maybe some small overlap with Ethereum performing fairly well at the moment. We haven't seen anything yet, as I mentioned before, in terms of blow off tops for Bitcoin, etc. Something else that's interesting on trading view as well is something called the all season cycle. So you can see here some of the things I mentioned. Bitcoin dominance being up, plus say the Bitcoin price being up, is all in likelihood altcoins price would be going sideways. Don't forget there is a limited amount of liquidity or capital within these particular markets. 
And what we tend to see is a flow from one or project X to project Y. So as Bitcoin is pumping and Bitcoin's dominance is up, the price is going up. There isn't as much capital flowing around within cryptocurrencies for those to increase their market cap as well. Of course, we get more capital coming into the markets as they mature going forward into the future. But typically when we're seeing this incredible amount of volatility that people come to know and love of cryptocurrencies, genuinely just means that not everything can pump at once. Bitcoin dominance being up and Bitcoin price going towards the side. Typically, you'll see all coins um, go down, up, down, and then you get a dump, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what obviously the majority of people are looking for potentially is Bitcoin dominance goes towards the side. So that's the equity split or the capital split between the cryptocurrencies. Um, in terms of market cap, Bitcoin price may trend upwards. All coins will tend to do really well. And then vice versa as well. Bitcoin price goes sideways, dominance begins to fall and we'll see altcoins surge going forward into the future. Again, these are always a rule of thumb, but the main thing is patience in the markets with this. I see a lot of people getting very impatient when they see project X, Y, and Z pumping whilst their HBAR tokens or their XLM tokens aren't really doing much as of yet. They then tend to sell out of their positions after holding for potentially a considerable amount of time to try and chase the, the uh, sort of latest fad, the FOMO, they FOMO it effectively and then they miss the pump on the token they're originally holding. Some other sort of bullish news for the cryptocurrency space is Ethereum Denken upgrade has now gone live. This is supposedly bringing reduced transaction fees on layer twos. I've covered a lot of Ethereum upgrades in the past. Not something that I'm particularly concerned about. If we flick across to the average transaction fees on Ethereum, Average transaction fees on Ethereum, we can already see that we're still at $1.62 and that's average without any sort of peak in terms of gas, etc. of what's going on after this upgrade has gone live. So again, marginal improvement at best of this upgrade versus uh, the previous version. And actually, in fact, we saw this was a bit of a sort of a letdown, in my opinion, of the move from proof of work to proof of stake for Ethereum, there wasn't as much of a marginal improvement. You still need layer twos, et cetera, on top of Ethereum in order to process transactions um, at a comparable rate to some other layer zero, layer one uh, DLTs, such as HBAR, for example. Of course, HBAR, we're talking of a fraction of a cent. They are just not in the same league whatsoever. That being said, I'm not saying Ethereum is probably going to be going anywhere anytime soon because obviously it commands an awful lot of attention and again, capital because things like first mover advantage, et cetera, et cetera. Something funny as well, which always ends up stirring the pot. Elon Musk has said Tesla will enable Doge payments at some point, Dogecoin to the moon. I've seen this before. Elon has said a lot of things about accepting cryptocurrencies. This isn't the first time and probably won't be the last time he has spoken about accepting meme coins as payment for Teslas. In fact, many of you that have been around for a while probably remember me covering when he accepted Bitcoin for a short period of time um, for purchases on Teslas and then sort of retracted that. And then he was talking about dumping it, et cetera, et cetera. So whilst things like this can be positive, of course, his influence as well could actually be negative depending on what he comes out with next Tuesday. So yeah, take it a pinch of salt, but we are seeing a lot more momentum throughout the markets. It's exciting stuff and exciting times to be around, particularly if you've been waiting for a while. Wanted to touch on this as well, actually, because Hedera seemed to be upping their marketing campaign. I won't play it just in case of copyright, etc. But there's a two minute video up on Hedera's Twitter account, professionally done with a sort of voiceover, etc. It all started with a vision, a vision of how the Internet could work, which required technology that simply did not exist. Then came Hashgraph, then came Hedera. That vision is now being realized, but our story has only just begun. Hello, future HBAR. So we are seeing some sort of marketing momentum from Hedera themselves. Uh, potentially the governing council voted on this and Swelds, et cetera. They are looking to um, put out some of the more of these marketing materials. And I think actually it's some pretty good timing. So you can see here, Lehman invents the Hashgraph consensus algorithm back in 2015. We are now in 2024, so there's been an awful lot of development. And actually, if you watch this video, it talks about tens of thousands of developers, you know, hundreds of different projects, um, all thriving within the HBAR ecosystem, which will continue to expand going forward into the future. Wanted to touch on this as well, because Hedera themselves, again, are continuing to bang the drum on RWAs, something I've done many different videos on. I'm sure you can go find them on the channel. I as well believe it was, is set to reshape the global economy, tons of different benefits uh, as I've covered in previous videos. And of course, the Hedera network is already doing this. It's one of the um, 
sort of quivers to the bow of Hedera that are already taking place, are already in action. Regulatory compliance and low predictable fees. Hedera, of course, provides the infrastructure for this transformation and enables things like this to happen and take place. RWA tokenization on Hedera has been going around for a while and across many different sectors and industries, which is a very, very powerful thing. 44 billion. 44 billion HBAR transactions have now been processed, all real world, all third party initiated, all on Hedera, the most utilized public cryptocurrency or DLT network. Hedera is doing more transactions than any other blockchain network combined as it currently stands. And as there have been many de debates in the past, I've debunked majority of them. These are all, as HBAR 1000 says, third party initiated paid for transactions which are effectively generating revenue for Hedera directly. That will continue moving forward into the future as well. Largest renewable energy producer in Europe, EDF, have built three different projects on Hedera now. Green H2 certification and trading, EV charging with renewable energy credits. That's a big one potentially with how that sector is shaping up and moving forward into the future with climate pledges, etc. And mandates for um, ZEVs and Hedge, Hedera, Google, EDF, decentralized platform connecting small physical assets are all being developed directly on Hedera. And of course, EDF as well being a governing council member. So more talk from the HBAR Foundation about Pyth network integration. Time for DeFi on Hedera to enter its next stage of growth. So I covered this in the previous video, but of course, this is a big integration for Hedera, bringing sort of external information as an oracle uh, to be accessible within the decentralized application space of the ecosystem. Just like the Hashgraph, Pyth is renowned for its scalability, enabling it to deliver real-time data fees to smart contracts on Hedera. This opens the door for lending, perpetu perpetuals, and other use cases that are dependent on instant data transmission. Matching the highly secure nature of Hedera, Pyth has a deep focus on quality and integrity of the data that it provides for these smart contracts. By leveraging decentralized network validators, Pyth helps limit collusion and data manipulation seen in the centralized solutions that currently exist. As DeFi on Hedera scales, we look forward to having Pyth scale with it. If you're a Pyth, Java or Solidity developer, you can access Hedera-centric documentation available on Gitbook or GitHub directly. So of course, we are looking to see more integrations here take place and we've seen things like H-Liquidity, I touched on that in the last video but they are incredibly exciting opportunities coming towards Hedera and the price oracle Pyth opens the door to facilitate decentralized applications such as this. Some really exciting stuff and again could hugely blow up the Hedera ecosystem for m massive, massive use cases. A shout out for SourceSwap Labs from the HBAR Foundation um, has finally arrived in 2024. So leading, leading decks on Hedera, of course, Again, anyone that's been watching my videos um, should be fully, fully aware of Source Swap. Done tons of different videos on them directly, use information as well as various different tutorials of actually using their decentralized application itself. Um, but speaking of Source Swap directly, three hundred million dollars in volume in thirty days. Source Swap has processed over three hundred million dollars in trades last month across over 700,000 plus transactions via the Hedera smart contract service. On Ethereum, assuming an $80 gas fee, this would incur 56 million in fees, making it over 1,000 times costlier than Hedera. So here, hopefully this shows the scale and magnitude of how powerful solutions are built natively on Hedera, leveraging things like those low predictable fees. If this this sheer volume of transactions has probably only been facilitated by the fact that it's built on top of Hedera. You wouldn't have seen it on Ethereum because it would have cost you $56 million in order to process all of those transactions. Right then, before I round up this video, before it gets any longer, it's happening on the 17th of March. Pack makes Hedera history, all eyes on Hashpack. So the INO initial um, NFT offering launch date and store update for the pack token and pack associated NFTs. Those concierge collectibles will go live on the 17th of March at 9 a.m. PST, 12 p.m. EST, and 4 p.m. UK time. So make sure you update Hashpack to version 9.7 in order to, up, uh, to access the updated Hashpack store. And then, of course, you will be able to purchase those apps 
at the go live dates in any of those particular regions. And of course I covered in the previous video, but you can also find it on Hashpack's Twitter and their website directly, the different levels of those common shares collectibles and the pack tokens associated that you will receive later down the line. Anyway, guys, hopefully you're all bullish about the cryptocurrency space as it currently stands, because things will surely get better over the near and particularly into the longer term. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like, drop a comment if you've got something to say. I do try and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. And until the next one, I'll catch you then. Cheers.